It's Matt and this is Collaboration Coach. And in this video, I'm gonna show some love to the administrators because I've been ignoring them for a while. And I was asked by a couple of viewers to do a review of the new SharePoint Administration Center in Office 365. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. The new SharePoint Admin Center is still in preview. So the old one that they're calling the classic Admin Center is still available. And you can switch back and forth between the two anytime you like. We've got this classic admin center link on the left here. And if I click on that, it will take me back to the old look and feel. So here I am. And now if I want to switch back to the new one, I just hit try it now at the top right here. It will take me back. Now we land on the home page, and the home page is kind of an aggregation of existing features around Office 365. So you see we've got these two graphs files by activity type and total active sites, which are really useful if you're sort of tracking your growth. But these graphs and the data are also available in the Office 365 Admin Center. So it's kind of making it useful for a SharePoint admin. And then down here, we've got Service Health and the Message Center. So these are all the SharePoint related messages and health. So it makes it nice and easy for you as a SharePoint admin to track that. So the part of the new admin center that's been really useful for me right now is the active site section, because that's really got some new features and makes managing sites, existing sites, really easy. So I'm gonna come up to the site section and go to active sites. Now you can see straight away, we've got a list, long list of sites here, and columns showing us metadata about each of those sites. And now at the top here, we've got a create button. So now we can create new sites from this admin center and we can export the whole list to a CSV. We can do a search on the site. So if I'm interested in all the sites that have Contoso in them, I can filter that list. And we've also got views here in the sort of in the SharePoint style. So there's some custom views already. So if I want to say view my largest sites, it will list them for me by storage used in gigabytes. And then I've also got my least active sites. And you can create your own views as well. So if you make a change, say, customize the columns, say let's add in some new columns and apply that. Now you'll see that the view is not saved and I can save the view as and call this Matt's view or something like that. So now you can start to make personal customized views on what you're seeing in the active sites list, which is really handy. We can also create sites from this page as well. We've got a create button at the top left here, hit create, and it shows us the two options that all users see when they create a site, team site and communication site. But because we're running this from the admin center, we also have a third option. I've just shrink my browser a little bit you can see I've got this other options section here. So if I click on, you'll see it's taking me to four of the classic site templates. So you can still create classic sites with this admin center. Any of these you create here will be using the classic experience. So have the old look and feel. That's useful. I've been using that with customers, particularly for testing, when they've asked me to test for transition from classic to modern sites. So when you wanna create a new site, you choose the type of site you want to create. It will test the group alias just like it does normally. And then you have privacy settings, time zone, description and storage limit that you can set. Okay, so all you need to do is add a site name and a group owner and you're good to go. And once that's finished, you can hit finish. You'll see progress up here and the site will be created and there it is. Now you're gonna notice that the ribbon in the active sites list is contextual. So if I hit on this electronic events site, you'll see the ribbon change above. And now I've got these options, owners, hub site, sharing, delete and storage. So these are my site settings. So I can come here and change the owners, just go change group owners. And I've got a list of owners here and I can remove them and I can add them and save so I can manage my owners there. I can also change the hub site association and also create new hub sites. So while I've got this one selected, 
I've got the option to register as a hub site or associate with an existing hub site. Now you can see whether the site is hub site or associated with a hub site at a glance from this hub site association column. You can see we've got a couple of sites here that are already associated, and one here that's actually a hub site. So you've got the basically two choices with hub sites, either register as a new or associate with an existing one. So if I select this and go to hub site, I'm going to associate with an existing hub site, gives me a drop down of all my existing hub sites, and I'm going to choose Contoso Marketing and save. Now you'll see in the hub site association column, I've got the Contoso Marketing Central hub site. So that's good news because up until now we've had to do that with PowerShell. Now we can do it easily through the GUI. Now as well as hub sites, you can configure sharing. So when I click on the sharing button in the ribbon, I get this flyer on the right hand side. So now I can configure external sharing for this particular site. External sharing obviously is when you share with guests outside the tenant. And you've got four options here from least restrictive, which is anyone. So basically anyone can be invited to most restrictive, which is no external sharing at all. So if you want to switch off external sharing, you can do that. Now in between, you've got these two options, new and existing guests and existing guests. New and existing guests means you can invite new people who haven't already been sharing in your tenant. And existing guests means you can only add people that already have existing permissions. Next is delete. So if you want to delete the site, the site will be sent to the recycle bin. So if I hit delete now, it will warn me to start with that this is a site that's connected to an Office 365 group. So as you know, when you delete a site that's connected to a group, you delete everything. You delete the group, you delete the Outlook mailbox, you delete the site, and you also delete the Microsoft team if that has one connected to it. So it forces you to read this and approve by checking the box, the deletion. So when I hit delete, it will be removed from my active sites list and it will be dropped into the deleted sites list. Another cool thing about the new admin center is that you can follow the progress. So when it's working on something, it shows you the fact that it's doing so and you can view what's happening on the right hand side here. So that's done now. So if I switch to the deleted sites, you can see the site I just deleted is here and I can restore it to the active sites if I want to. So back on the active sites list, the last button I wanted to show you was the storage button. So when you select a site, choose storage. So this sets up the storage limits for the site. So you can have a maximum storage for the site, which you can set to how many gig you want. And then you can have notifications on or off, but they're on by default and they will email the owners when the storage limit has reached 98%. So you can configure that to anything you like for that particular site. Now, another thing I'm using quite a bit is the information pane. So when you select a site and go to the little eye in the circle here, you can see an information pane. So it's like the details pane in a normal SharePoint document library. And for every site, you get this insight section, which is kind of a view on how many pages have been viewed, um, last activity, storage, and so on. Then further down here, you get a property section. Now this is really useful. I know it's like kind of trivial, but having a URL that you can actually click on to open up the site is really <laughs> useful for SharePoint administrator. See, that's taking me straight to the engineering site. Then you've also got the hub site association. So if you wanted to change that, you can do that from here by hitting change. And it shows you the hub site dropdown. You can also at a glance see whether it's connected to a group or not. And you can manage the owners. So here I can just type in or, or remove owners. And then further down, we can change the storage limit and we can also change the external sharing. So these two buttons are exactly the same as the buttons on the ribbon, but it's just nice and easy to have it all in one place like that. Okay, so that's the active sites, which I think it covers off most of the major changes and the major new features in the admin center. Uh, sharing and access control have also been moved across uh, but they're very similar to what already existed. And you've also got a, a settings page, which is also very similar to the settings page on the classic admin center. And gradually Microsoft are moving all the features over, but we're still in preview mode right now. So it's looking pretty good. It's starting to be really useful. I hope this helped. And if you've got any experiences, then let us know in the comments. 
and please subscribe and give us a like if you like the video. See you next time.